On the last video, we talked about the basic factors which create ocean currents, and we also talked about a little bit of the composition of the ocean water and what currents are all about. Uh, this video, I just do, I want to do a quick overview of the major currents of the ocean, and I want to highlight some of the most important ones that affect, especially us here up in the northern hemisphere. So. Um, Let's start with the Atlantic Ocean, all right? Uh, well, actually, let's start with the equator. Now, there are there is a very, very big pattern of current motion heading west in the equator, all right? And in this general direction here, west in the equator. Let me just restart here. There's a pattern of motion uh, heading west in the equator. And both the Atlantic and, and the um, Pacific Ocean and there is both north and south of the equator, slightly north and south of the equator, you have these things called equatorial currents. You have the south equatorial current and the north equatorial current. In between them, there's a, a weaker countercurrent that actually returns water into the, uh, to the other side. So you see here the equatorial countercurrent. And that's basically caused because when the water hits the continents, it's forced to go backwards. So that's the whole thing about continents surf as a barrier. Uh, and you also have a smaller version of that here in the Indian Ocean that has very, very pronounced small currents, which is why you have so many monsoons in the Indian Ocean because it's such a smaller circulation pattern, uh, which allows the water to heat up a lot. And so there's a lot of evaporation causing a lot of precipitation during the monsoon months. Um, then, if you look at the, uh, the uh, another one that is one of these lateral currents, in addition to the equatorial currents, are the equator an Antarctic circumpolar current. And that's actually, actually a very important current because it has the ability to move around the entire world since it's unobstructed by any continents. And so, pushed here deeply by the, west, by the westerlies of the southern hemisphere, this wind pattern constantly drives the current around the world it goes and that actually causes the exchange of water between the, the oceans of the world between the Indian Ocean the Pacific Ocean and the Atlantic Ocean so that's interesting now the the that's basically saying that the southern ocean is in constant rotation or around the world all right now another one of these important currents is the uh, North Atlantic Giri so we're gonna be focusing here on the North Atlantic Giri or the circulation pattern of the North Atlantic. Now, remember that these Giri's are patterns of circulation caused by convection cells, wind, uh, Coriolis effect, and Earth's um, um, continental barriers, which cause the, uh, the, cur the currents to distribute heat, hot water from the poles, rise towards the towards the north. And you see that here in the bottom right of your of your screen, right here, that these Giri's are functioning to distribute the heat. I also pointed in the other video that in the northern hemisphere, the Giri is moved in a clockwise direction because of the Coriolis effect, but on the, on the, on the, on the southern hemisphere, the winds move in a counterclockwise direction. Okay. Um, also notice that what I meant with this distribution of heat, the heat distribution system, you can see how the, uh, both the Gulf Stream in the Atlantic and the Kuroshio current in uh, the Pacific carry heats from the tropics, where from that doldrum, water-rich, those hot equatorial currents, uh, into the northern part of the uh, of the earth, which allows us to actually live in what would otherwise be a frigid area up here in the top of the world. This would be extremely frigid here, be on the higher latitudes, if it wasn't for these currents constantly carrying the heat from to the north. Now let's focus on, oh uh, by the way, we now we use satellite systems like the Jason 2 satellite system recently launched by NASA to track these currents uh, with satellite imaging like you saw here. Uh, they, they track water motion, water height, as, and solidity, temperatures, and all things like that to actually study the circula ocean circulation. Now, the North Atlantic Giri, uh, there is a current that comes from the southern hemisphere, the equatorial current that actually enters the, the Caribbean Ocean, circulates inside the, the, uh, the Gulf of Mexico and exits between Florida and, and Cuba and joins the Gulf Stream. I want to just point that out because the Gulf Stream receives twice the amount of heat 
because they received some heat from the southern hemisphere as well as from the northern hemisphere. Now, the northern certain theory brings heat in, from Africa and the tropical areas of the equator towards the U.S., and then it hits Florida with a very humid, very humid, hot air that, that creates a lot of evaporation that then there, therefore causes the uh, the, uh, the maritime tropical um, air mass, which we talked about when we did the weather and climate chapters. Now, these this current is then going to move north along the eastern seaboard of the U.S. and carry heat all the way to Canada and eventually into Europe. And it becomes what we call the North Atlantic Current, where it's much, much colder already, uh, much, much colder already because it receives a blast of water from the Labrador currents and the, the, the East Greenland current, uh, which are very, very cold. Now then, this, this current actually heads north to warm up a little bit of the, uh, of the Scandinavian countries, uh, in what's called the Norwegian current. Then, a colder, now already cold water, called the Canary current, because of the Canary Islands, which are light right there, heads south along the coast of Africa, which makes actually cools down the west coast, the west coast of Africa, until it returns to the equator, warms up again, and restarts the cycle. That's what we call the North Atlantic Jury. And something very similar will happen in the uh, Pacific Ocean. So let's just look at that very, very quickly. You, you have the, the North Equator, Equatorial Current, the same way you have the, the North uh, uh, Atlantic Current, and then this becomes not the Gulf Stream, but the Japanese version of the Gulf Stream, which is the Kuroshio Current, which then joins with the currents of the Bering Sea, which carry cold from, from the top, and then cool down this water, causing the California coast to be very cold, mild water. So the waters in California are cold, not as hot as the waters on the eastern seaboard, because the cold water is coming from the polar air regions. Now, I also want to note, note to you that there's a peculiar circulation par pattern going on here in the Bering Sea, and I showed you that briefly on the other video. I uh, also want to highlight a few more important things, that the South Pacific current system is actually one of the most important systems of the world because it's very susceptible to what we call the El Nino effect, and this is where the world, the world will absorb the most amount of heat doing solar maximum, causing evaporation, which will then spread evaporation and rain throughout the world, ca causing a, a massive rainstorm pattern all over the world. And the opposite will happen during La Nina, when the solar minimum will cool down this current so much that it almost shuts it down, leading to droughts around the world. And also, as I mentioned at the beginning of this video, uh, to, I wanted to point out that the Indian current system is much more concentrated, allowing for greater evaporation and consequently severe monsoon patterns that don't show up in the other continent, other older oceans of the world. Now remember that these currents are actually distributing the heat around the world. And just like the wind patterns, ocean currents are crucial in maintaining the, the climate of a, of a region through these jiris that distribute the heat, like I mentioned about the Gulf Stream and the Kuroshio current warming up the northern hemisphere. Now another interesting part of what happens with the, with the currents is something that we call the west boundary currents. Now remember that as we talked in the previous video, that if you talk about the idea of wind patterns, there is a constant flow, especially near the equator, towards the, towards the west because of the trade winds pushing the currents that way. Which means that in the western, the eastern side of the continents, the continents are constantly being hit by water. Meanwhile, um, and they are hit with more power than they're hit on the returning water, such as the California current or the Canary currents do. So the currents heading heading uh, west are very very strong. So what we call the the uh, west boundary currents are currents which uh, affect the eastern sides of continents, okay? And they're usually like the Kuroshio and the and the Gulf Stream carriers of heat for the northern hemisphere. And you can actually see the Gulf Stream pattern over here carrying massive amount, amounts of heat into the northern hemisphere through the, through the uh, Gulf Stream current. Now, what will happen because of this pattern is that the Canary Current coming back on the, on the, on, on the Atlantic Ocean will actually carry gentle, cold-moving water 
that's very shallow, all right? Very shallow, gentle, cold moving water that doesn't really affect the waters of the ocean too much. And meanwhile, you're going to have this pattern of push towards, uh, because of the winds, towards the continents. And then the water is going to be squished, which it causes the Gulf Stream current to be deeper. So you have this deep gash of hot water because the Gulf Stream carries heat from the, from the tropics that extends all the way to the northern hemisphere, as you see on the left side of the, of the picture. So because you have the world in the westerly going this way, you're going to get a motion of wind blowing in towards the west, which causes the, 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 the sea to uh, be pushed and created this bulge on the sea. So technically, the water level is slightly higher here near the west than it is near Africa, where the Canary Current causes only a gentle slope instead of a, sleep, a steep slope. All right? And the same thing will happen with the Kuroshio Current in Japan. All right? Now, another thing that's actually important about these current systems is because of these jerry's circulations in the ocean, you see that something that's called a current or a formation. Or you see them here all over the place, ring-like systems, which actually are involved in the generation of, of storms in the, in, in the oceans. Things like um, hurricanes are powered partially by winds, partially by the circulating rings of, of water. So you have many, as, as, as well as the large convection cells of, 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 of which we talked about previously, you have these mini convection cells calling, causing these rings of ocean water in the, in, the, in the oceans as well. Now, that surface currents on the next video, we're going to talk about deep ocean currents. All right, see you then.